Hey there, it's the Monday edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. Welcome back. Hope you had a good weekend. Our weekend weather was okay. We had some sun. We had some rain at times, especially back on Saturday. And uh, then we had a shot of chilly air last night. And these are some backyard low temperatures this morning. Now, I live in Boardman. I did have some patchy frost uh, in my backyard this morning. And uh, some of you have chimed in on Facebook and told me the same thing. Boardman about 30 this morning. Uh, we had a 33 up here closer to Austin Town, up around Howland, 34 degrees, 34 over close to Hubbard. There's a 31 down in Lisbon. So a lot of us were close to freezing this morning, and that'll be the last time I think that we see uh, freezing or close to freezing for a while and maybe for the rest of the season. Now, I did talk a little bit about uh, this last week on these videos and also on TV that our typical last freeze or, or our average last freeze, when you average it all out over the last 30 years, is, is around this time of the year, around the 6th or 7th of May. But that's just the average. Sometimes it happens earlier. Sometimes it happens later. Last year, we had a freeze around, I believe it was the 20th. Uh, so, you know, we're not going to completely sound the all clear. But I don't think over the next week or so, odds really favor us having to deal with freezing temperatures. So if you're real gutsy uh, and you want to gamble a little bit and plant some things that, uh, you know, maybe you might typically plant after the last freeze, uh, you know, I, I could say with maybe 70 to 80 percent certainty that we've seen our last freeze. But I'm not going to guarantee it just yet. It's still too early. It's only May the 5th. And uh you know, you just have to be a little bit careful in this type of a, a climate in, in this part of the country because, you know, sometimes we can get a sneaky last freeze well into May. All right, let's talk about what's going on this afternoon. I'm recording this just after 2 o'clock. We've had a decent day so far. We've had a mixed bag of clouds and sunshine. Some of the time it's cloudier than others, kind of a, a variably cloudy day, if you will. And I do think we're going to stay dry for another couple of hours. But uh, I'm going to be keeping an eye on this batch of showers that's cruising through Ann Arbor and uh, Detroit, Michigan, heading across Lake Erie, and uh, this may impact uh, some of us for our after-school, after-work plans uh, as we head towards, especially, I think, 435, 530. I'm going to show you the future radar in just a second, but here's the motion of how that band of showers is moving out of southeastern Michigan, moving over the western end of Lake Erie, and, and the trajectory on this suggests it's going to impact parts of the valley towards the end of the afternoon today. So again, I'll bring up that future radar in just a second. Let's focus on temperatures. One of the big stories nationally over the weekend was the heat that was really building out across the middle of the country. And uh, we had 100 degree readings in places such as Wichita. And today, a lot like yesterday. Look at this. This is only at uh, you know one in the afternoon out here. And, and parts of Oklahoma and northern Texas, it's uh, 96 degrees right there, 94 here, right along the Red River. This is a hot spot. It's a low spot, the border between Oklahoma and Texas, and it can get really hot. So summer's kicking in down there. It's also kicking in in parts of the southeast. Check this out. It's 90, 92 at this hour around Columbia, South Carolina. Charlotte's in the mid-80s. Uh, so, you know, tastes of summer finally starting to be felt, and we will get in on some of this warmth towards the end of the week. Uh, we're not going to see 90, but I do think we've got a good shot at 80 by Thursday. Look at the chilly air around the Great Lakes, though. These cold lakes will continue having an influence on temperatures downwind of the lakes well into the spring and perhaps even into summer as well. Uh, of course, we've had a record or near record ice cover earlier this season on the lakes and still at this late date, temperatures are way, way below the average for the first week of May on the Great Lakes. Even still some ice eastern end of Lake Erie and up into Lake Superior as well. All right, so the future radar will bring up our high resolution uh, computer model here, bring up the latest version of this hot off the presses. This is basically what uh, it thinks the radar will look like. Uh, and this is at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, the leading edge of those showers that I just showed you on the current radar now coming ashore, it looks like at around 4, 4.30, up in parts of Lake County, uh, Ashtabula County as well. So that's 4 o'clock. And let's roll this forward. Here's 5 o'clock. Uh, the radar probably starting to fill in with some light rain, a few showers around Cleveland, and uh, heading over into parts of Geauga County, maybe northern Trumbull County by 5 o'clock starts to see these. Here's 6 o'clock, and you know, if this ends up being right, and you know, I think it has a pretty good idea here, a good chunk of Mercer and, and Trumbull counties, uh, and perhaps even other parts of the WFMJ viewing area, will be seeing a few raindrops here at around, around 6 o'clock this evening. Tonight's your golf league night. Be prepared. You know, this doesn't look like a huge deal, but I think some of us are going to get a little damp. Uh, 5.30, 6 o'clock. Here's 7 o'clock. Again, right in the heart of the WFMJ viewing area, some light rain. And at 8 o'clock, just before sunset, some of us are still getting a little bit wet. Uh, there has been a little bit of thunder and lightning with this. Let me bring up the, the lightning detector here. 
a little bit of lightning down here in central Ohio, but that stuff's not coming this way. Just a couple of strokes, real hard to see here, just south of Detroit. So, you know, as this comes across, I'll keep an eye on the lightning data. Uh, there's an outside chance that with some of this light rain, we may hear a clap of thunder, see some lightning uh, somewhere between, say, 4.30 and 8 o'clock across the viewing area of the sea. All right, so beyond this evening, things are starting to look up. Here's a look at uh, Tuesday. Not much going on. High pressure up to the north. Looks like an uneventful day tomorrow. Uh, we're going to start to approach seasonable after being below average for several days in a row now. As we head towards Wednesday, here's our true warm front Wednesday morning. It'll be kind of like right in here. And I think there will be some showers, perhaps even a, a thunder shower along this Wednesday. And if I had to place my bets right now, I would say odds favor it being a morning and midday thing with drying from south to north in the afternoon. I'm not going to take that to the bank just yet. That's just my gut feeling on this. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see where this front lays out. GFS model here still wants to spark some stuff up along the lakeshore, at least, late on Wednesday. The farther south you are in the WFMG viewing area, down into Columbiana County, say, I think the chances are greater that you're going to see a drying trend by the afternoon on Wednesday after a, after a damp start. Thursday is our warm day. Here's Thursday. This is a, this is a blowtorch kind of a day here with a, a southwest breeze, a strengthening southwest breeze. It'll be a fairly breezy, if not windy day, and temperatures will be off to the races. And then Friday arrives. I think this is still a warm day, and temperatures will be dependent on cloud cover and timing of precipitation on Friday. If we see some appreciable sun and showers and thunderstorms don't really materialize until the end of the day, if at all, you know, Friday could be almost as warm as Thursday. But if it clouds up a little quicker and showers get going a little sooner than maybe we expect this far out, you know, it'll, it'll be modestly cooler on Friday. So nonetheless, particularly late Friday, Friday night, probably a few rounds of wet weather here, showers and thunderstorms. Saturday at this point also looking pretty soggy. This front's probably going to try to stall somewhere. Around Ohio and Pennsylvania, could see some showers and storms start of the weekend. At this point, I would say the better half of the weekend, and it's only Monday, so keep in mind this is subject to change. But at this point, the better half of the weekend to me looks to be Sunday. All right, in the meantime, I talked about that warm day Thursday. Here's a look at the latest GFS temperatures. Thursday afternoon has us right on the money, 80 degrees here in Youngstown with mid-80s down along the Ohio River. The uh, European model, odds of 80 degrees or higher. Uh, these are percent chances. Uh, pretty high. Once we get uh, into northeast Ohio, I think, uh, you know, the Europeans predicting somewhere between a, a 40 and about 80 percent chance of seeing 80 degrees in your backyard on Thursday. I suspect the odds are closer to 80 than 40. So I think there's a real good chance that we get uh, a pretty warm day coming up on Thursday. We deserve it. We should enjoy that because uh, starting to look at the longer range here in mid-month, right around mid-month. Uh, so past Mother's Day, uh, around the 15th, 16th, 17th, uh, odds are starting to favor a coolish air mass moving through. Now, keep in mind, in mid-May, cool might mean a high of 60, 62. Not exactly cold, but below average. So uh, odds don't look real great for 80-degree-plus temperatures during that mid-month period. So that's the latest trend in the longer range, and that's weather for Weather Geeks on this Monday. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, thanks for tuning in uh, to my forecast tonight on 21 News at 6 and 11. I'll see you then.